everyone, the Sephora savings event is coming up and I thought instead of telling you what I think you should buy, I'm instead gonna share what I'm gonna be buying. All right, so number one is actually a product that is currently sold out and I'm gonna already guess that they're not going to bring it back during the Sephora savings event, but a girl can dream. I've been waiting to purchase this very specific Patrick Ta Major Headlines Cream Blush Duo. The shade here is not too much. This one right here is owned by my friend and makeup artist, Nikki LaRose, and she's the person that sold me on it just like on most of my makeup, but you can see that it's like a soft, rosy taupe shade. And of course you get the cream and the powder shade because I don't know if you've watched how Patrick does tutorials with this blush, but he likes to actually start with the powder and then go in with the cream on top of it just to kind of give that like dewy finish. I personally find that the cream is a little bit patchy sometimes, but overall I really like this formula and I do like that kind of look where your blush looks really dewy. But specifically, I love these tones. I'm wearing them right now. I think Nikki put the powder on my cheeks and it is so beautiful. I feel like when you look at a shade like this, you don't think it's going to have that much impact on your skin, but it is so beautiful and so natural looking. And it's just one of my favorite types of shades to wear for blush. And one of the reasons why I want this one so bad is because Nikki also like three years ago turned me on to the Laura Mercier blush color infusion. There are two shades actually that I specifically love in that line, Chai and Fresco. I tend to wear Fresco the most just because it has a little bit of shimmer in it. So it just kind of gives that luminescent look, I suppose. But it's a very, very similar shade. Chai specifically is very similar to this. While I'm still committed to that blush, I just wanted to try something differently because I really have not veered from using that Laura Mercier blush for the last three years. So I wanted to try something different. Even if it doesn't come back in stock during the sale, I'll eventually buy that one. So so Patrick Ta, these blushes right here, that specific shade, not too much. That's what I'm gonna be buying eventually. <laughs> Next up, you know that a sunscreen is always going to be on my list. I want to purchase the Kosas Dream Beam Sunlit Shade. So it's basically like a more golden, iridescent, luminescent sunscreen shade. It's still SPF 40. It has peptides and ceramides in it. It just looks really pretty. It looks like it's right up my alley. I don't know if it's good at all. I personally like the original formula. I thought it made my skin look really glowy underneath makeup. And I feel like it set really well for me. But I've also heard from people that they do not enjoy this sunscreen. So I think Sunscreen's a very personal choice. It's very dependent on your own skin type and everything that you're kind of going for, the kind of finish that you want with a sunscreen. I have not tried it yet. And if I'm being honest, I probably have this one coming to me in PR. Like it might be sitting in my mailbox right now because I am on the Kosas uh, PR list, but I have not personally tried it yet. And if I don't get NPR, I will go purchase this one. It just looks interesting to me. Next up, you know, I love my lip balms. I even have, you know, lip balms within my brand, but I'm always, always open to trying new lip balms. Carly Rivlin, I don't know if you follow her on TikTok especially, but she used to actually work on the mixed makeup team and she has become the lip balm slash lip gloss queen on TikTok. And recently she declared the Ula Hendrickson Pout Preserve Hydrating Peptide Lip Treatment as her favorite right now among all of the different brands that have lip balms. Plus there are so many different shades to choose from now. I think I have like four or five new shades. So of course I'm interested. I need to try it. I'll also throw out there. I don't need a new one from them right now, but from Sephora, I would say that my favorite lip gloss is the Lawless Forget the Filler. I think the shade is called Cherry. It's gorgeous. That formula is nice and thick and glossy. Like if you like super, super glossy, I think that's my favorite right now of all the Sephora lip balms. But I don't know. I need to try this little head. Hendrickson one. Next up, the Ilya Skin Rewind Complexion Stick. I have to tell you, I actually already have this. I got it in PR, but you have to get this. You have to try it because I was so pleasantly surprised by this. I'm not one to really enjoy a complexion stick. I think the last time I liked like a foundation stick was from Hourglass a while back, but even that one was a little bit too heavy for my skin. I did not think I was going to enjoy this. I really didn't. Like it just sounded like, I mean, they used the word matte, I think. I wanna say it was like in their description of the product or something, they used the word matte. And as a dry skin girly, that is usually not the word I am going for, but I decided to go ahead and try it anyway, just cause it's an easy product to use. That's probably the best thing about a foundation stick is that it's just, it's really easy to use it. So I gave it a try and I have to tell you, I'm so into this product. It is so, so nice. By the way, it is not matte. I would say it's more of a natural finish. I would even go as far as saying that it gives you a little bit of a luminous finish, not glowy. So if you're not a glow girl, don't worry. Like it's not gonna give you that kind of a finish. It just gives you a really beautiful natural finish and it's really light. I think that's what I like about it the most is 
you can just like swipe it on. I take Nikki's powder brush and I just blend it out really quickly and it is so easy. And it gives really amazing coverage, but doesn't feel heavy. I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't feel like a concealer. I think that's my biggest issue with these complexion foundations, these, these stick foundations. It feels like it's too heavy a lot of the time and then it gets like cracky over time and everything. It just doesn't usually wear well for me. This one is perfect. I don't know how else to explain it. You have to give it a try. It covers well, it looks natural, it feels light, and you can just put it on so easily and quickly. And by the way, if you have mature skin, the other thing I like about it is that because it's such a light texture on your skin, it doesn't sink into all your fine lines, wrinkles, and all of your texture and everything. It just feels really light. All right, next up on my list, Dior Forever Glow Star Filter Multi-Use Complexion Enhancing Booster. I had to look at the phone to just get that name right because it's a long name. This is a little bit pricey, so I'm actually on the fence about it. It's $55, but it sort of seems like it's very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I love. I also love the one from e.l.f. All really, really great products. I love using these, especially underneath my makeup if I'm trying to look super glowy. It looks similar to that, and I like a Dior product. I love the Dior foundation, so I kind of feel like I'm going to really love it. Do I want to love it? I kind of don't because I don't want to have another expensive complexion product that I like buying. But at the same time, again, I love Dior complexion products, so I feel like I have to give it a try, even at $55. Next up, there's a brand called In Beauty Project, and I have not tried any of their products. I don't really even know why. I don't know what the reasoning is for that, but there's a very specific product that they launched not too long ago. It's a moisturizer. It's called the In Beauty Project Extreme Cream Anti-Aging Firming and Lifting Refillable Moisturizer. This is a $48 moisturizer. It looks like it's right up my alley as far as the things that it offers, like it has. Let's see, you're shopping with me. These are the things I'm looking at. 7% lifting peptides. There's a 2% bioretinol. They have ceramides in here to strengthen your skin barrier. It's fragrance free. Like it just kind of seems like the type of moisturizer that I would love. But what really sold this brand to me and this specific moisturizer to me is that I've seen so many people, like my colleagues in this industry, just rave about this brand and also the founder. You know, I first saw that moisturizer I think it was Alex, the cosmetic chemist. She's Alex, the founder of Educated Mess. I saw her raving about this specific moisturizer. So even with that, it just kind of piqued my interest. But then like the more I talk to people, this is the thing like about this industry, right? You talk to people about other founders and people that are in this industry. And it turns out even people who work for me on my team at Notarium really love the founder of In Beauty Project. So it makes me more interested in a brand. I'm all about these good vibes. And so I'm gonna pick up this moisturizer because it piques my interest. A lot of their products actually actually are really interesting to me, but I'm gonna start with one product and go from there. Next up is the Brown Girl Jane Discovery Set. I have not used any of the fragrances that are from this brand, but I've been very interested in them for a couple of reasons, actually. One, I follow Fumi on TikTok. She's kind of my fragrance queen. She just explains things well. I feel like she's like a sommelier, but a fragrance. She always explains fragrance exactly the way I want somebody to describe it to me, for me to like get it and be interested in it. So she's one of my favorites on TikTok when it comes to anything fragrance. And I also just like her in general. She's a friend. So, but I'd seen one of her videos where she talked about Brown Girl Jane and I hadn't really heard of the brand. I'd seen it occasionally, but it didn't really click for me that I actually know one of the founders. Her name is Ty. I haven't seen or talked to Ty in years, but she is fantastic. We don't know each other really well, but any interaction that I've ever had with Ty, I've always walked away from it feeling like she's just an awesome person. So I didn't know that she's one of the founders of Brown Girl Jane. You know, one of the things that I keep hearing from Fumi throughout some of her videos is that there are not a lot of black people in the fragrance industry. So it just made me really aware of that industry because I don't think I've ever really taken a good look at the fragrance industry. It's not my industry, even though it's within the beauty industry, it's not specific to me because first off, my skincare brand is mostly fragrance free. I don't really dabble in fragrance. I just know that I like fragrance and that's you know just something that I, I enjoy buying, but I don't think too hard about that specific industry. So I really feel like I've learned a lot by watching Fumi and a few other people on TikTok who are in the fragrance space. Face. And so she's brought up Brown Girl Jane a few times. So I finally looked into it because it just interested me. And I saw that they have a discovery set. So it's gonna be the first thing that I purchased from the brand. They have a discovery set at Sephora. I have a feeling that they're a little bit new at Sephora too, because I also already shop a lot of like the candles and the home fragrance at Sephora. So I don't think I've ever really seen Brown Girl Jane there, but I saw that they're on Sephora. So I'm gonna get the discovery set and figure out which of their fragrances are my favorite. And then I'll report back. Next up, let me read the name. Colfi Free the Brow Volumizing and Laminating Brow Gel. This is $26. I love a brow product. I don't have a really good reason why I want to buy this besides the fact that I am a beauty, uh, I don't want to say a hoe, but I am. <laughs> I don't 
really have a good reason why I want to buy this. I like the brand. Some of their products that I've used, like their concealer, I'm sold on. So I feel like I want another brow product. I'm obsessed with brow products. I like just like lip balms. It's one of those types of products where it's really easy to sell me on it. You made a brow gel? Cool, I'll try it. A brow laminating gel? Cool, I'll try it. A brow pencil? Yes, I'll try it. So I don't have really good reasons why I want to buy this brow gel. I want to try it. I'm always down for finding a brow gel that I can throw into my bag and it's easy to use. Next up, two tanning products, probably the same exact product, who knows? But the first one that I'm gonna be purchasing is the Isle of Paradise Sunny Serum Instant Face Bronzer. Let me tell you why. I feel like the sound of it, the description, it's a liquid bronzing serum that instantly illuminates. Oh wait, no, is this an actual tanning? <gasps> oh no, this isn't the actual. Oh, you guys are doing, seeing this in real life happen. I'll still probably buy it. I thought this was gonna be a competitor to the product that I will buy for sure. And that is the Tan Lux Super Glow Hyaluronic Self Tan serum, you know. If you've been following me, you know I buy that stuff. It's probably one of my most purchased skincare products. It gives me such a beautiful, natural glow, like a tone, like a warm tone to my skin. It's so easy to use. You know, like when it comes to sunless tanner, I love sunless tanner, but I feel like I have to work my way up to doing my sunless tanner. Like I have to be in the mood. I have to have that time set aside. I have to go through my whole routine where in the shower, I do my everything shower. I'm super exfoliated. I get out, I'm super super moisturized. Like I have to be like in the mood to use Sunless Tanner. But when it comes to the Tan Luxe Serum, the Hyaluronic Serum, so easy to use. It's in my skincare routine at all times. And this is probably why I go through so many bottles of it. It travels with me. It's just, it's so good. It's so, so good. But it's $49. It's actually one of the most painful purchases that I make because I love it so much, but I also think it's really expensive. And so I have such a hard time parting with that money buying this product. So I will be re-upping. If there's a sale happening, I buy like more than one, but I was hoping I was hoping this Isle of Paradise Sunny Serum Instant Face Bronzer, I thought that this was gonna be a competitor to it. And now I'm looking closely at the description of this. $24, I, I had so much hope. I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be half the price of the one that I like buying. And if it's the same, then perfect. It's not. Kind of like the way Trunk Elephant has their debronzing and Glow Recipe launch like their serum that has like a bronziness to it. Seems like that's the same thing, but I, you know what? I'll buy it anyway, because I like a glow. But speaking of restocking some of my favorite products like that Tan Lux product, during any of the sales, that's when I stock up on products that I just know that I use and I buy. And when I say stock up, I mean, I buy like one extra. Like I won't buy one, I'll buy like two. It's a few of those products that I will definitely restock on. This one I don't think I talk about. It's the Bumble and Bumble Thickening Dry Spun Volume Texture Spray. I just love this product. I actually buy the travel size a lot to keep with me while I'm on my work trips because it gives your hair life again. That's like the best way to explain it. I know texturizing sprays were in a few years back and it feels like it's just kind of like gone out of style. This one's a little bit different. There's something about it. One, I like the way that it smells, but two, it really is like a, instead of using, you know what I think it is? I stopped using dry shampoo a couple of years ago just because I started feeling like it was making my hair more flaky. It was making my, my scalp itchy. It was just causing problems for me. So I backed off on the dry shampoo. But the thing I liked the most about dry shampoo is that it would give your hair a little bit more life again on like the second day or third day. Cause I still take like three, four, days to wash my hair just because it's a lot of hair. I don't want to have to restyle it all the time. What I have found with this texturizing spray is it just gives my hair a lot more life and body again. I usually use it on like the second or third day, even sometimes right after I blow out my hair, especially if I do it myself. If I feel like I didn't do a really good job, this comes in and saves the day for me. It just makes me look like I actually have a hairstyle. So that's why I like it. It's easy to use and it brushes out easily. I still don't feel like I have to wash my hair for like two, three more days. You know that I love the Tower 28 Make Waves Lengthening and Volumizing Mascara. I'll buy another tube of that because I go through that pretty quickly. Also, the Kosas Brow Pop Nano. I go through way too many of these. I have asked several times that they sell this in a three pack, but I go through a ton of it. I'm medium brown. That has like become the shade that I, I go to the most. I will buy two or three of those because I have to keep more than one in my makeup bag because the worst, the worst is when you don't realize that you are about to finish up that brow pencil and it happens really quickly. It's like the thing I love about this is that it's such a thin pencil, but because it's such a thin pencil, you go through it so quickly. So you don't know that like when you're on your last of it, that this is the end. And so you might finish one brow and then be done. And then you can't get to your other brow. So you have to keep a backup in your bag at all times. I'm gonna definitely buy a few more of these. Also, my favorite, I've decided my favorite, nine months and counting now, my favorite home fragrance is the Margiela Replica fragrance that's called Lazy Sunday Morning. 
I have every home product in that scent at this point. I have the candles. I have travel size candles that travel with me. I have the regular size candle for my house. I even have diffusers sitting around my house. I love this fragrance. It's becoming my go-to fragrance for my house. So I'm gonna definitely purchase more candles. And then last, the Milk Makeup Matte Cream Bronzer Stick. By far, my favorite bronzing stick shade is Baked. I love it. I know that a lot of people have complained about how small these little Milk Makeup sticks are. It lasts for a decent amount of time. It really does. And for me specifically, Baked is the perfect shade for me. I ran out of it like three months ago. And I was like, I don't need to buy another bronzing stick because I have so many cream bronzers. So many cream bronzers. Right now I've gone back to the Chanel cream bronzer that's in the pot. I love that one. Don't get me wrong. It's really nice, but it's a little bit like more of an orangey kind of tone for the skin, which is fine, especially for my needs. It's totally fine. But my perfect shade is this Baked shade from Milk Makeup. It is so good. So I'm going to have to purchase another one. Even though I have other cream bronzers. I'm just gonna go and do it. So that is what's sitting in my Sephora cart right now. Those are the products I plan on purchasing, minus that Patrick Ta, because I really, really doubt it's gonna come back in stock, but I'm gonna still pay attention. I am going to pay attention, just in case. They might surprise us and slip in a few. You never know. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. These are the products that I have my eye on. I'd love to know what products at Sephora that you're shopping, especially for the savings event for the sale. So let me know in the comments below and find me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm at Susan Yara. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.